difficult, but a burden to these companies. So why would they want to hire these people or want to train or mentor these people? So they definitely want to choose people who are not only smart, but can learn and adapt. I think those are the two key words that smart people must also need to learn and adapt, especially with a very fast moving, uh, changing world. Um, so they also want students who have the cognitive abilities to think outside the box because the routine cognitive abilities are actually the easiest to be replaced by, um, as I said, uh, technology. And, um, and those are the skills that are also easily digitized, automated, or even outsourced. Um, so since I think uh, in the future, they might not exist. So students are, inc uh, students are encouraged to use um, not just the uh, normal cognitive abilities, but also think outside the box. So that's why we also encourage students to do projects or do internships, because um, in schools right now, um, a lot of schools right, right now are teaching like, oh, basically, teachers are the one who are asking the uh, questions, uh, the students just maybe memorize or answer. But are those the skills that they, they require or are they supposed to think of the questions and are they supposed to actually think of the answers as well? I think uh, the second uh, uh, category is leadership or skill sets leadership, and I think that is straightforward. So I'm not going to go into very deeply in that. Um, but I also I do want to highlight the third one, which is the role related knowledge. Uh, role related knowledge. I know a lot of high schoolers or fresh grads might not actually have those. But I also want to kind of explain what those mean. So it's to be uh, able to go in depth in certain areas. So what is hot right now? STEM. Many students these days always come to us, or parents these days come to us and say, oh, we're very interested in STEM. Um, my kid is very interested in STEM. So similar to what kind of Google is looking for when colleges, future employers, or even maybe boarding schools, uh, we, we want to see someone that doesn't just write STEM on their application or in their interviews to say, I'm interested in STEM. Okay, so you're interested in STEM. So 10 out of 10 students who come will say that. So how do you demonstrate that you are actually interested in that? So that's where projects and internships come in, where you can actually have anecdotes, stories, or uh, things to demonstrate that you're, it's not just a passion of yours, but you have developed that passion and you, you have worked at it and you have tried to find solutions as well. So I think these are very important opportunities for your, uh, your kids to actually demonstrate that uh, they're willing to take the initiative to uh, do something outside uh, of school. And then, um, yeah, so this word, Googleiness, if that's how you pronounce it, Googleiness, I think. Um, so it, it is to make sure that students nowadays are actually comfortable with two main things, uh, ambiguity, and also they need to be able to be collaborative in, uh, they need to be collaborative in general. So we are moving into a world where it's full of unanswerable questions. So um, if you think of the traditional schools, as I just said, um, they are trained to sometimes memorize. Some schools might be a bit more project based, but project is the way to go because projects is where you have an idea. And you have to think of a question in terms of how, of what kind of solutions uh, to answer those questions. Those are the main important parts uh, when they actually do this inquiry-based learning. Um, so I kind of want to go to the next uh, slide. So uh, after understanding why, so what are what internships and projects should parents choose? Um, so I think there's three main words, kind of cliche, but definitely three main things that parents should think uh, of. Firstly, passion. Uh, secondly, strength. And third is purpose. Um, we hope um, this kind of framework uh, will help you or uh, you guide your child and explain different ideas for summer, or even help the student themselves kind of think about uh, what they want to do for summer. So for passion, <clears throat> uh, this is really one of the most important elements to find success. And not only to find success, but also to find joy in one's life. You know, uh, They don't want to be doing something in summer or even for their whole lives. That they do not enjoy. So that is really one of the most important things. But a very common question that we get from a lot of parents uh, when they come and find us is, uh, my child doesn't seem like they're passionate about anything. Or um, it seems like they, are, uh, they, they haven't shown interest 
in anything particular yet. Oh, I, I really don't know what to do. Well, it, it's understandable. I mean, like there's only, they're only like maybe in their teens, uh, they're still thinking about things, um, I, but there are a, a few ways to maybe get it out of them. <clears throat> maybe first kind of start with where the children or your kid actually lose their sense of time. What are they spending their, their time on? Uh, what kind of books are they reading? What websites are they exploring the most? Uh, what kind of games or even podcasts or what events or concerts or uh, gatherings? Uh, uh, what what are they doing? So I think starting from that, you might be able to derive this question or maybe something a bit more profound. Like maybe uh, what are uh, what causes uh, in the world are are they interested in? What problems uh, do they want to solve or what are their favorite subjects or maybe something smaller like what kind what are they obsessed with? What animals? What sports? What um, are they? Uh, some students are really obsessed with plastics, like not wanting so many plastics in the world. So these are some of the things that they can think about for uh, <clears throat> passion. Um, so the second thing is a strengths. So I think by now, if they're in their teens, maybe by in their report card, you can kind of tell maybe in terms of what areas they they get higher grades. But I think it still is worth it to do a self reflection. First, uh, to kind of first do, um, depending on your child, is maybe uh, kind of do an interview, maybe an interview uh, between your family members. It's a good bonding activity as well. Um, so I think that is definitely one way to kind of learn more about oneself and also for the kids to learn more about their family members as well. Or another one is not just what subject matters they're, uh, they're strong at, but maybe character-wise, personality-wise, what are they good at? And this is a the VIA character strengths is actually a very popular and very common uh, survey. It's a 15 minute survey, it's free, it's online and you can just go and then tick it and then they will tell you, uh, give you a report on 24 uh, different types of strengths across six domains. So that is also a good way to kind of learn more about what strengths uh, they have, especially character strengths, um, so that you kind of know where their talents are. So skills and talents, uh, arts, academic areas, or, or is it creative endeavors, such as like maybe even cooking, podcast, mixing music, talking, well, I don't know if that's a word, but at least playing with TikTok, uh, are those areas that they're interested in. So um, also what the third category is purpose. This is very important. They can be, uh, they can be interested in playing the guitar. They might be good at playing the guitar, but is it that their project or internship is just going to be playing the guitar? There, there must be some purpose to this. Uh, uh, is there some type of end goal, some type of mission? Uh, as I said, is there some kind of problem they're trying to solve? Um, it, there must be some purpose to it uh, besides just exploring one's passion and strengths. And I think that is where uh, we will dive a bit uh, more into. Um, so yes, uh, um, I <clears throat> right now is I want to, after thinking about what type, I kind of want to start thinking about how. And that's where we started partnering with Cocoon. And we actually started partnering with Cocoon since uh, day one, uh, seven years ago. And uh, one big part of our Inspired Internship Project is to help students find internships in startups, NGOs, universities, government. And <clears throat> Cocoon has been a very helpful and very inspiring partner in this uh, endeavor. And they have a network of over 30,000 startups and entrepreneurs. Um, so right now I wanna uh, introduce Erica Ma, who is the co-founder of Cocoon. And she will kind of talk in more detail about Cocoon herself and uh, what they do. So I'll give it to Erica right now. Hi everyone, my name is Erica. It's lovely to meet you all. Um, I'm here to kind of give you a little bit of an intro of what is our, our partnership with Um So first things first, um, our job at Cocoon is to be an incubator. We look at a lot of startups globally. Um, we are also a Google for Startups partner. Google for Startups has a partner in the of the world and there are theirs in Hong Kong. Um, and the entrepreneurs we work with are not only local, they're also all over Southeast Asia, Europe, America. And um, I encourage you or you know your your family to check us out online and, and join our community. Um, sort of get an exposure to what we do and how we do it. So a little bit of background about me. Um, I 
I went to Stanford um, undergraduate. Uh, I did my uh, in communication focused on human interaction. And then I also did a master's there um, on psychology. And I'm going to quickly share um, a little story that I think will help um, explain why this talk today might be helpful to you and your family. So this was more than 20 years ago when I graduated. And when I graduated with two Stanford degrees, not two degrees at all. And this is a time when you know, consulting and advertising and finance is some of the information out there. So with my degrees, I thought, okay, so maybe I should be in some kind of advertising marketing kind of fun job. So I went out and I have like I sent out like 30 resumes. I like packets of ideas that would come up with every time. And time and again, I'd show up at these interviews and you know, I'd present my and share with my excitement about working. They would look at me and look at my resume and be like, huh, you seem smart. You don't know how to do any. So I, I, I got passed on a lot of jobs and that was very, very humble. Um, and eventually, my first job, I actually started at a startup because it was startup that gave me an opportunity to uh, come in. Hey, you look like you know something about, about the internet and about um, disability and how humans interact with devices. You want to know what to do. And I reflect that now and look at a lot of resumes I look at today. So every year I look at about like 100 resumes. Um, and throughout the hiring process, I still see a lot of resumes like mine when I was looking for pretty decent in terms of you know, sports and academics, but there was no job, no real working experience. And that is a big problem. They can't differentiate one. Um, and so I hope in today's talk, um, I'll be able to share with you um, what kinds of options there are through the And also I'll share a bit about stories of people I've worked with and how they've evolved over time, whether it's secondary school and then into college and post-college. A little more background about Cocoon. Um, we have um, built with two main pillars. Number one is community. So we host online and offline events, um, gathering folks locally and internationally. Uh, we'll do a pitching event this month where um, startup teams will each have five minutes to present. We've had over 400 teams that their ideas um, the community, and they've collectively raised over seven dollars capital. That's up to 900 US dollars. Um, so that's sort of our our core value proposition. Startups through Cocoon, you're able to pitch and present your ideas. Um, we also became a Google for Startups partner. Um, we're startups with partners all over the world, and every partner has a unique program. Uh, through Cocoon, we run a program called 92 Express. 92 being the nine cities to special greater Bay area. So what we do is we offer startups and founders from around the world to come to work with us and get access to investors and get access to, um, to manufacturers, to business development opportunities. Uh, within the Greater Bay Area. Um, one of the observations we have for this area is um, hardware, uh, IoT. Uh, you can, it's much faster if you, if you want to create um, smart devices um, from this part of the world. So we actually have a lot of hardware founders. We also have an investment farm um, where we uh, mostly focused on investing in B2B technologies um, that help traditional businesses optimize or uh, improve the productivity of their traditional processes. So to date, we've invested in 18 companies or are based in Hong Kong or the rest of around the world. Uh, we invested in a, um, a messaging platform out in Pakistan. I actually had one of my interns from HUST, research on it and the diligence on it like two summers ago before we 
check. Um, we've also invested in uh, robotics companies that we've had our interns go out to do competitive analysis on. So I've, I've personally worked with a, a lot of interns through the Coon. They've done a lot of work for us on um, the investment. And our third uh, pillar is education. Uh, we work with the um, Rocky Club Charities Trust, and um, we're on the fourth year of the program, where we're currently 40 local secondary schools, teaching more than 8,000 secondary schools, how entrepreneurship is a life skill. So you know, when, we, when we go into schools and talk about entrepreneurship, I've actually had a lot of students tell me, hey, Erica, I have no money. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know why I have to learn this. And we we observe or, or we see entrepreneurship as a life skill because you can apply it anywhere you go. It's all about looking for opportunities, gathering resources, and turning ideas into action. So this is a process to apply whether you're in school or whether you are in um, or whether you are um, you know applying for college or or looking for um, a job. Um, and so this is also an area where I've had a lot of interns come through uh, to be a part of our education team and go to schools and work with students and run design thinking workshops um, to teach entrepreneurship. And um, one of my biggest learnings is that as we have been teaching and as our interns have been teaching students, they've also been learning a lot um, about entrepreneurship. Else. So today, over like a hundred startups and corporates have been part of um, you know, the system in offering for challenges, offering job shadows, and offering internships to students. And I'm going to um, maybe start with a few FAQs um, about internships that I've heard of in the past, and be welcome to put any questions you have in the Q&A box, and we can keep going through them as we go through this presentation as well. Um, so the first one, you know, uh, why is, why is, what is the value of an internship? Um, like I said earlier, it's about building up work experience, and that will, Im that, that will very much impact um, the job opportunities that um, a student will have down the road. And hopefully- Hi guys, sorry, I know that there might be a connection, uh, uh, not so good. So I think right now, uh, Erica will try to present with a different platform. And then, so is it better right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see, let me, let me, let me yeah. all your, you, I think I'm gonna go, okay. So let's see, can we, can, can everybody hear? Okay, all right. All right, then I'm gonna keep going. So I'll give you an example of Zoe. Zoe is an intern I met maybe five years ago. She was at the time um, a secondary school student, local school. She came to Cocoon and she was like, Erica, I wanna work at Cocoon Foundation and help you guys out with the education piece. And so she did, you know, a summer went by and then next summer, I, I started watching her on LinkedIn and every summer um, subsequently after she she graduated from secondary school and got into HK UST, she worked at a startup for for you know summer break, Christmas break, Easter break. And it was like logistics, it was payment, and then it was fintech. And then by the time she graduated HK UST, which was four short years later, her resume on LinkedIn had like six to eight internships on it. So you can imagine if you are recruiting somebody that if you saw a resume like this, you would be like, wow, this person clearly has job work experience. If I brought this person on board, I wouldn't have to worry that, you know, they, they might not be a good fit in my working environment. Um, and then another question we get asked a lot is what's the difference between interning at a startup and, a, and like a bigger company? So I was one of those kids who, you know, had, had, was lucky enough to have like one call and I'll have like a job in a big company. And I remember working, you know, in a telecom company and I had my cube and then I had some work. People would always be like, oh, Erica, you know English. 
So how about you just translate some materials for us? So I got pieces of paper to translate, but it was very narrow. Like in a big company, the opportunities are very limited because people don't want to take the risks with you and they don't want to necessarily give you that much learning because they know you're leaving in like three weeks or, 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 or one month. Um, but in a smaller company, um, the opportunities are, are much wider. Um, I'll give you an, an example of, um, of um, Stephanie. I'll, her name, it's not her real name, but I'll just give it to you. She is at Exeter right now. And, you know, she, she is into art and design and, and um, she, she, I worked with her, um, Baker and Bloom, and she said, you know, I, I don't know if I can apply my art, artistic side, my strengths in, in the work environment. So I want to try. And she said, Erica, I want to go work for this design studio that I saw online. Do you know them? And then I was like, yeah, I, I know them. So I lined them up for like an interview online. They had a chat and then they, she went into work over COVID when she was back in Hong Kong. And, you know, a month later, she messaged me. She was like, Erica, thank you so much. I learned a lot. And, you know, it was a great experience for me. You know, I've always been very analog on the art side, but this time she got a digital working experience. So again, when you work in a startup, you have more working opportunities and you can also really apply some of your strengths and, and figure out, hey, can my strengths and passion become a job for me down the road? How long is an internship? So typically um, at Cocoon, our internships are no less than two weeks. Um, at other startups, it's uh, about the same two weeks to four weeks. They're quite flexible working with students. Um, and it's, it's really up to the, the, the discussion with between the student and the startup. But we do encourage folks to start considering this before end of April. Um, like last year during COVID, I had a lot of like increase with through Baker and Bloom, like right before summer. And like a lot of startups don't have, don't have quota. They, they've, been, they've hired summer interns like much earlier. Um, so I think, you know, thinking about this proactively early on is helpful. Uh, so you get the flexibility and the timing that fits your family's um, summer plans. What is expected of an intern? Okay, interns are expected to know what a company does. So that's something that I'm sure Jessica and Baker and Bloom and the team will be training up the students with so that you know kind of what job interviews you're trying to, you know, impress people at. Like, you know, what does this company do? What's special about it? What do you want to do there? How, how do you plan to contribute? Um, as someone, you know, who's worked with a lot of interns, I think it's really important for students to show up wanting to contribute and wanting to, to support the team. Um, I hear a lot of, you know, I want to come and learn. You know, learning is a lot about taking, right? But I think companies want to know what, what your, your teammates can give to, to the bigger purpose. Um, so having that attitude of wanting to contribute is important. Having, you know, being adaptable. Um, and also, like Jessica said, like, you know, at a startup, the learning environment is changing every day for the startup. So I think students really like that because there's a lot of interesting things to do as opposed to a more traditional company where, they sit in front of a computer for four or six weeks and they do the same thing every single day and they have nobody to talk to. Um, so I think as an intern inside a startup, it's really important to communicate, um, to be able to collaborate and also to, to be adaptable to take on new projects um, um, every, every day. And is interning fun? Um, I think that's a big, that's, that's my big sort of promotion for working at startups. I, to date, most of my interns have always told us that, you know, whether it's working at Cocoon or working through the network of Cocoon startups, it's really fun. What we try to do whenever possible is to pair up interns so a startup doesn't have one student there. It's always like a pair or like a mini group. Like a Cocoon will have like six to eight interns in the summertime and they will work together, um, that, that could make the experience uh, much better um, where you know, they're not the only sort of young person there. So um, here's an example, like in this picture, you actually see students from high school, uh, local and global into colleges. I have a Stanford student in this picture. I have an ISF student in this picture. I have a, uh, a student in, in at Kent, um, out in, uh, in 
New England and I have a bunch of HK UST students. Um, I have another US boarding school student here. So you can see that there, it's like cross ages, it's different schools and they, they're all focused on different disciplines, but they all come into work at Cocoon. And, uh, and I'll give you an example of what a week is like at Cocoon. So every Monday morning, we'll have projects that will go out to all of our interns. Um, we'll sort of brief them on, hey, what's coming up. We actually put all of our projects on Trello, which is like a project management platform. So they can see all the cards and know what they're working on. And they have like four days to work on it. And so by Thursday, there's always a presentation in the morning. There's like a two hour presentation where everybody shares what they've been working on. I think this peer to peer sharing and this whole like, hey, we have short deadlines. So we need you to sprint is, is also helpful for students. Um, so they know um, what, what to expect. Um, what is expected of them is not, you know, a month later, show me what you've been doing. It's like every four days, show us what you're doing. And um, on Friday, they all get to work on their own project. Um, it's their, it's, it's their summer. So I want to make sure that during that time, they can come up with something that they care about um, and also deliver it um, for themselves. It's going to fit into their resume. Uh, like one year I had a student who was really interested in crypto. And so throughout the summer, every Friday, he'd be working on his crypto project, learning about Bitcoins, learning about Ethereum, learning about kind of how, how, does, how, how does the whole ecosystem um, around cryptocurrency works. Um, I'll give you another example of another student who worked at Cocoon, Cocoon over the summer. He actually had two internships at Cocoon. So he was an ISF student uh, when I first met him. He was probably at like 10th grade. I think I just saw a Q&A pop up in terms of age requirement. I think, you know, we'll cover it. Yeah, Jessica will cover that shortly. Um, but the first internship, he was like in secondary school. He came through Cocoon. He was like, Erica, I want to learn more about like entrepreneurship community. So he did. He showed up. And then we asked him to help us out with like pitching events. And we asked him to help us look at startup teams. And believe it or not, there were things that we asked him to work on like projects. Like, hey, can you go do up that research project? And the secondary school student would tell us, no, I don't want to do it. And we were like, what? Okay, so if you don't wanna do something that's okay with us, we will let you you know, be on your computer. But what I'm trying to share with you here is internships are a learning process, a learning curve for students. Like showing up at a job for nine hours a day is hard because they've never done that before. Doing what people tell them to do without really having the option to say no is also hard. They've never done that before. So it's something they have to learn. So then after the first summer, I was like, okay, this intern was fine. Like he did 80% of the projects, they were all okay. So good for him. And because I have like a hundred interns coming in and out of Cocoon, I don't, I don't think about one in particular too much. You know, they just come in and go and, and if they do well, we give them more exciting projects to do, but if they don't want to do anything or if they want to do less, then we'll be like, okay, you can take it easy, but then you only take out how much you put in. But to my surprise, this intern came back to me in the second year. And he was like, Erica, this year, I want to work on education. I'm like, do you want to go to schools and teach students about entrepreneurship? That's hard. Are you sure? Um, and he was like, yes. So second year he came in, he was much more proactive. He could follow through much better. He worked much better with the team. He communicated much better. And then I was, you know, we were just all really happy to work with him. Um, and, and he delivered a lot of value to the community. Um, and fast forward. Like a year or so later, he got into college. He went to the U.S. and then and then he came back and he visited us. And I was like, "Hey, how you doing?" He's like, "Oh, you know, because I was teaching entrepreneurship through Cocoon, I, I discovered how important computer science is. So now I'm majoring in computer science. I never thought I would major in computer science, but my experience through my internship gave me insights that hey, if I don't major in computer science, I won't have the skills necessary." to possibly become an entrepreneur. And guess what? I also started an entrepreneurship club in my university. And I was like, wow, hey, good for you. These are the stories that we are really happy and excited about. And I wanna connect that back with what Jessica said about passion, strength, and purpose. These are things that are developed and they, they don't happen to a person or a person does not just like discover them when they wake up. They have to go to work. They have to do the work and have different types of working experiences in order to develop their passion develop their strengths and develop their purpose. 
Um, there are two more startups that I want to quickly cover uh, before turning it back over to Jessica. So Genie is a fintech startup that a lot of our students have worked at as well. Um, I've had a student whose name is Derek. He was at St. George's in Vancouver. He came to Hong Kong over the summer and he worked at Genie. So this student is a typical student that Jessica mentioned, like no passion, no interest. His thing was tennis, he loves playing tennis, but he was like, Eric, I need some work experience, you know, where should I go? So I referred him to Victor. He's a founder I really like. I think he's one of those founders who um, has a lot of passion about what he does and he's a good mentor. So Genie is basically a FinTech startup where they cross-reference data between companies and banks. So if a user uh, through your bank account, you actually see a lot of random like company names where you spend money. You don't actually know if that was Watson's or KFC or Manning's. So they, they uh, cross over that data um, with the companies and are able to generate insights for banks and also for uh, customers to know where their spending has gone and how to better optimize their savings and investments. So my student, Derek, went to Genie, and I was really worried about him because he doesn't talk much. I'm not sure if he can collaborate and he doesn't have much passion. And I was like, I hope you do well. I really, really do. To my surprise, like four weeks later, Victor sends me an email. He was like, hey, Erica, you know, Derek did really good. I was like, really? What did he do? Well, we, call, we told him to make cold calls. We made him cold call like a bunch of companies because we need to cross-reference data with them. And he did it really well. So that to me is something that I'm really proud and excited to share with you because if that was my kid, I would be really happy to know that my kid showed up at work, communicated, did something that I didn't think he or she could do. And it was good enough where the mentor there would bother to write me an email and tell me, hey, that, that kid did good. We welcome him to come back again next year. So that's uh, you know another example of good internships that I hope your family and your kids will, will get to experience. The final one um, that I want to share with you today is um, a, an example of how, you know, Genie was much more of an AI company. They do a lot of machine learning. They crunch a lot of data. Green Queen is much more of a media company, um, a creative media company where um, I've had students who were like, hey, I care about journalism. I care about creative writing. And I want to be a part of, you know, a startup environment. So this is where we place some of those students uh, because they get to talk about some of the most interesting stories that are happening around the world now. You know, whether it's uh, whether it has to do with energy, climate change, food tech, biotech, Green Queen uh, covers a lot of that. Um, so I hope that through the sharing today, you'll have a, a flavor that, you know, Cocoon itself offers internships, but through Cocoon, you also have access to a wide range of internships um, that hopefully will match um, your family and your children's um, developing passions, strengths, and purposes. So that's all from me on my end. Um, we have more startups that we can talk about later but I'm gonna turn it back over to Jessica to talk more about next steps. All right, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, um, thank you, Erica. And I'm sorry for the slight uh, tech, tech glitch and I hope everyone can hear us clearly right now. Um, so for this, uh, uh, this slide, uh, I, I included this slide because um, after seeing a lot of uh, the parents, uh, they submitting them some questions uh, while you actually enroll for the parent workshop, we, we found that actually a lot of the parents want to know more about the program. So um, as one of the parents just asked, like, okay, what, what age? So we actually, of course, the better is grade nine and above. But for certain projects and for sometimes, I know Cocoon do, do take uh, middle schoolers as well, but they need to be mature, collaborative, and also have, have some kind of initiative. But grade nine and above, we definitely can help out. Most of our students actually do, uh, as uh, uh, <clears throat> Erica said, at least two weeks, but usually they sign up for four weeks, some eight weeks. Eight week ones are usually for uh, half a year. Um, they, they usually do it during, it doesn't need to be summer. It, it can be during um, the school break. So it's available all year round. Um, uh, Erica highlighted a, a couple of examples and she actually included a few slides of other um, 
uh, um, startups that might be of interest of, uh, to you as well. Uh, but I think a lot of the nature of the internships, especially if the parents come to us, they're usually like, oh, I want to do something related to language or humanities, or I want to do something related to STEM. Uh, a big one is climate change. Uh, a lot of uh, students are coming to us who want to combine their interests either in sports or something together with uh, environmental consciousness. Uh, so that is a big one lately. Um, a couple of parents asked us whether they, whether they need to choose, uh, um, like a, the nature of the internship must be related to their major or what they're going to be applying to a college. No, I, I, I don't think, oh, well, of course, if your, your kid already in grade nine already has a very clear idea of what he wants to do in college and already has a very specific college in mind, uh, then of course you want to do something to demonstrate to that admission officer that, okay, you're serious about this. Uh, but uh, we, we don't need to. And it, it, we encourage students to explore. As Erica said, you can go do uh, something maybe related to STEM one year and maybe the next year it'll be something more service related. It, it, and sometimes it is okay to tell the admission officer I actually don't know what I'm interested in yet, but I have demonstrated to you through my different types of summer uh, internships that I'm willing to try out different things and see if, uh, if they work out. And if they don't work out, this is why. At least you've tried out. So the, the answer to that is um, it can be, but it does, it's not necessary. And I think a, a big part of uh, our program, which uh, Erica mentioned a little bit already, is the mentorship component. Um, because uh, a lot of the startups, uh, NGOs, uh, we place students in are small ones. Um, so they do have uh, exposure to a, a wider area of how a startup actually operates. And I think most importantly is they will have exposure to senior management. Uh, as uh, what Erica said, like for Jeannie, you actually get to uh, um, interact with the founder. So I think those are valuable experiences that not every single student uh, will, or not every single internship will be able to offer. Um, and also uh, we do individualized letter of recommendation if the student does a good job, of course. And I think one thing I want to highlight a bit more is that we do provide training. Some parents want uh, maybe 10 hours of training. Some parents are like, oh no, I want less hours. I want them to be on the job training. That is fine, but I, I do want to highlight more about why we think uh, training is important and how this also differentiates maybe just by uh, just maybe uh, some parents finding a job for their kid in summer and say, oh, you go out and try it out without much training. Um, I think this is one thing that a lot of uh, parents appreciate about our program. And not only parents appreciate the training, the startups also actually appreciate the training. And I actually want to mention one thing. A lot of these companies, startups, it's not that they actually want to take on high school students, to be very honest. Um, they actually, they might not have enough space. I mean, Hong Kong space is very valuable. And, um, and also it's not that they have all the time to mentor. Most of the high schools or maybe even graduates, uh, college graduates, they, the amount that they can actually contribute to the uh, company might, might be less than actually what they need to uh, train them in. So uh, in terms of that, and especially right now, uh, employment is not that great. They, these companies can hire fresh graduates very easily and at a very low rate. So in some cases, we actually have to pay these startups to take uh, our students, not all of them, some of them we do need to. So they actually appreciate we do some training first uh, before the first day uh, of uh, uh, their internship. Um, so I kind of want to share some comments that sometimes we get from um, these startups or even when I take on some uh, interns, what's kind of common, uh, um, comments that I might have, it's like, oh, uh, it's 9.30 a.m., not here, okay. Uh, or uh, let me try to get a, a so-and-so intern to help out. Oh, not at the spot. Or watching videos or watching video games. Or um, seem, not seeming to show much interest in maybe uh, or showing any initiative. So these are sometimes some comments that we get from startups or even from our own experience. And I think uh, this is where maybe some training actually might help. Um, I can go into 
a bit more like these are some of the areas that we might do trade. So most of these startups actually require interviews. So we do give them at least half an hour to one hour interview training. Uh, work etiquette and conduct. This is something that we definitely want to train. We don't want because they are representing Baker and Bloom and also Cocoon. Uh, so and uh, a lot of these startups actually uh, tick our students every year. So we we also want to make sure that we build a good reputation with these startups. So it, things from professional attire to I think something simple. This uh, this is an example that sometimes I give to the students uh, um, that it it. it, it little things like even if you are sick how do you communicate that there are many ways of communicating i'm sick some students or some even employees they don't tell me they're sick they just don't show up okay that's one way uh another way would be okay i'm not feeling very well i want to take sick leave today okay that's another way or a third way is like, oh, I'm sick today. I'm so sorry. Um, I know these are certain of the things that I have on my to-do list, or these are certain things I know is very important to be completed by today, or these are some of the things that you have asked me about. Uh, I have either de delegated it to certain certain person, or uh, I will um, <clears throat> I will follow up when by when. So I think all three ways of communication actually the same is the person won't be there they're going to be taking sick leave. But as a, as someone who is the employer, uh, what type of impression do they get? So I think sometimes maybe just using these kind of examples to illustrate to the students that there's different types of communication ways. First, understand the chain of command and also what to communicate and what you do not want to communicate and how to communicate it. And sometimes I think even something that uh, uh, they can benefit from the long run is if they have concerns, how do they express their concerns? Uh, who do they express their concerns to? And this is something that I think even after they come out and they, they work for five or 10 years, this is something that they probably still need. Some people might still be struggling with. So these are some of the things that we might at least give them a glimpse of it or give them a little bit training. And also some of the post internship resume and college essay workshop, those are some of the areas that we will cover as well. Okay, so the next point is virtual internship. Why am I talking about virtual internship? That is because COVID. Uh, last year, we already had um, certain uh, startups that are impacted by COVID and we foresee that maybe this summer, um, this might be an issue or it might not be an issue. But we do have students actually who work who actually contacted us from mainland China. They actually worked with a Hong Kong company. It worked out very well. They met up, I think, uh, three times a week uh, on projects. They got mentorship. They, they had meetings online with other interns. Well, this is the real, new way of working in general. So, um, and then we had uh, another example where it was a Hong Kong student, but they work with a US company. They work with a, a basketball company in the US because he was interested in basketball. So I think um, virtual internship or virtual work in general is kind of the future uh, of the job uh, market. So this is something that we also offer and we also encourage. Of course, if you can have some in-person internship in Hong Kong, that's the best. Uh, but I do want us parents to bear in mind that this is an option. Okay, so we've talked a lot uh, about internships so far and um, we don't have too much time left. So I might need to kind of speed through projects a little bit, but I think one common question that we get from parents is that uh, what is the difference between projects and internships? Uh, well, I think there, uh, there is one major difference. Internship, you can determine what field your, your kid wants to go into, but you can't really determine what they're gonna work at, work like, to be very honest, it's going to be the startup that's going to determine it. But for projects, it's actually an idea of your student. They're going to develop uh, it and they're going to actually, with our mentorship, think of what problems they want to solve, what is their goal, what are their missions, and then, then they kind of have an end product. Uh, and the end product hopefully provides some kind of solution to uh, their initial idea. So this is kind of, I think, the major difference between what is a project and what is an internship. Um, of course, projects require much more initiative on the student's part, but that is something that we are also very uh, well-versed in, in terms of how to get it out of the students. <laughs> uh, but I, I want to, uh, with the remaining time, give you some samples of what type of projects we've done. So we have actually helped a lot of students uh, publish research papers and very uh, well, <clears throat> 
good reputation peer reviewed journals, uh, something about history, maybe Sino, uh, Sino Japan history, and then uh, the thesis and helping them getting published, or something like launching a S88 charity, or sometimes maybe not as serious as S88 charity, but at least launching a charity. Uh, so these are some of the examples. And last year we had a we had three students who came in as a group project who, who were very passionate about board games. And um, some one parent was very open to this idea, the other two weren't. But then after convincing, they then understood actually the board game was very educational as well. What were they trying to solve? They were trying to do this kind of like a Dungeon and Dragons, uh, Dragon and Vegeta. Sorry, I'm not quite sure about the name of that popular uh, uh, board game, but that is the type that they're trying to do. They developed the whole manual they actually designed it on uh, Minecraft and they also had a whole story. They had to create a whole creative writing project about the story behind every single character in that board game, how they connect with each other and um, they had even a very long manual. So that is something that is actually creative writing and also uh, with coding. So it's kind of combining a few interest areas into one project and having something to show for, which is they design a board game where actually they can play it with their other uh, friends. So this is something that I wanted to highlight. Of course, we have other ones like podcasts, uh, publishing books. Um, I kind of uh, wanted to illustrate, uh, uh, this was one of our very first projects. Um, it is a student uh, who is interested in environmental issues came to us and asked us, okay, uh, I kind of want to see what I can do. As I said, project is about a mission and a goal, not just telling us what you're interested in. What are you trying to solve? So uh, he wants to kind of learn more more about what uh, is the most trafficked animals in, in the world. And it's actually called the pet golem. And he wants to try to figure out, he wants to research about it and maybe figure out some suggestions of ways to uh, conserve, uh, help with the conservation of it. And so we met up with him six times, guided him through the whole research process. Then we connected him to actually the director of Ocean Park, the conservation arm. Uh, the, uh, they even, the Ocean Park even brought him out on a boat trip to see other kind of uh, animals that might be uh, 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 kind of indigenous already. And then, so, and. He, she was so impressed that she invited our student to give a presentation to 100 of the Ocean Park staff on his solution uh, on this most trafficked animal. So that was ki kind of his product. Um, another one is actually uh, another student. He, he developed an environmentalist app, uh, and, but he came to us with kind of three interests. He's interested in sports, uh, specifically kind of running. Uh, he's also interested in STEM. And he's also interested in environmental issues. So three areas. So what we had to do with him to get uh, together, we had to brainstorm some kind of uh, project that can merge all three interests together and also can demonstrate to maybe some of the colleges. So the background is the air quality, as all of you know, in, in Hong Kong is very poor. And uh, we research and there are actually only around five major air quality testing points on Hong Kong Island itself. So he was going to do a running uh, at the peak for 24 hours. So he partnered with the charity that was running uh, uh, that, uh, I mean, was organizing that run. And what he did was he designed through Arduino, uh, sourced all the individual parts himself through Taobao because he was under a budget. And then he formed his own air quality uh, controller. And then after that, he actually went around the peak, put the uh, air quality controller at different points, and then developed an app that actually monitored the air quality while the, the runners actually ran for the 24 hours. So that was his solution. It might not be like something like extremely big, but that was something that he can demonstrate uh, uh, to college uh, admission officers that uh, he was able to combine three uh, of his interest areas and then come up with some kind of solution. Uh, and then, oh, uh, and then we also have uh, students who are interested in photography. Again, interested in some kind of uh, social element or also environmental uh, climate change element. So we encourage them to maybe take some photos to highlight certain areas of uh, the society that they want to focus on. And uh, he was also able to gather other students together. And then they opened an art show, uh, and then also started a charity to uh, gather money. 
uh, for what uh, the causes that they want to improve on. So these are just some of the areas that um, uh, parents or students can focus on by combining different areas of their interests. Um, yep, yeah, so I kind of zoom past, and I think Erica also zoomed past some of the examples. We have plenty more examples, uh, but I, I just wanted to give you a perk because we are very happy that uh, all of you joined today. Uh, as Erica pointed out, uh, uh, it, it takes time to actually find an internship, it also takes time to brainstorm a project. So please do not, I know a lot of parents are still thinking, oh, maybe the COVID vaccine will all work out and we, we won't be in Hong Kong this year. So I don't wanna sign up for anything. I, I understand, uh, we're also sympathetic. Uh, uh, but at the same time, if you do see that you will be staying in Hong Kong, or as I said, we can connect you with other areas of the world. Uh, we connected someone with a US company last year. Or if you want to do internship and projects, we do hope that uh, perhaps you can contact us, um, kind of book an intro meeting, and then anyone who signed up for this talk gets $500 discount. And we hope that uh, the you can claim it before April 30th if you do sign up for the talk. Um, I also want to highlight that we have uh, quite a few other offerings lately. Uh, spring is, the second half of spring just started, and thankfully we can offer in-person classes again. Uh, we hope that that can continue. We also have a lot of exciting uh, Easter courses. And something that we found last year that was very popular was a lot of parents, because they're stuck in Hong Kong, and they are also very frustrated with how the uh, schools have been doing online learning, so many gaps. So what they did was uh, they know we're good at teaching uh, English, humanities, and STEM. So what they did was they actually came with maybe a couple of students, formed their own private uh, summer class to kind of fill in some of those holes. Uh, and so then we designed a curriculum for them uh, during summer to hopefully address these concerns. And of course, something that uh, a lot of our parents ask for is one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, so yeah, so again, thank you very much for joining our webinar today. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. If you have any questions for Erica, uh, again, I want to thank Erica. Um, so I don't know if uh, there are any questions. How, sorry. Let's see. What is the age requirement? Okay, so we have a question. What is the age requirement for the internship? And I think I tried to cover that is, uh, Grade nine and above is the preferable age group, uh, but we have helped uh, middle schoolers, grade seven and eight, but usually uh, they won't be placed in startups. They will mainly be placed in maybe with Cocoon mm. or with us yes. uh, or doing projects. Okay, so hi, Erica. Do you, uh, do you have a board listing the different internships available to give an idea of what sort of experience might be available? Mm. Um, we currently don't, um, but we could uh, find a few of the startups that are, are, are looking for internships. The reason we don't is because actually with Baker and Bloom, we're very, we offer a very customized experience. Like we'll have a chat with the student first and be like, hey, what you interested in? What's your, what are your strengths? And, and, and what are some of the projects that you've done in the past? And then we'll actually go and, and custom find, you know, an internship for, for the student. So, um, let's see, how would you assess if a grade seven kid is available or is suitable for an internship? Um, for me, it's all about agency. Like, I feel like, you know, if a student, to me, age doesn't matter. Like I've met very young kids or very old kids who, who, who have agency. Like if this is something they want to do. And I think a very good litmus test for that is whether it's a video call with Jessica or eventually, you know, with me or a startup, is your kid or your your fam or your your student willing to do it, or is this something that they're forced to do? Um, I find that people who do well at internships generally have agency. Um, they're willing to show up and ask questions, and they're just curious, like, "What's up? What's up about this company? I, I want to be a part of it." That's always a good test. Um, are they curious? One of the questions I always ask them is, "Who are your role models?" I ask them, who's your role model? Who do you look up to? I get a lot of Elon Musk. Yes. <laughs> I, got, I get a lot of Elon Musk. I get a lot of Jack Moss. I get a lot of like Steve Jobs and Bill Gates. Um, so find out who your student or your child's role model is. And they'll tell you a lot about whether, you know, technology-based or, or internships are the right fit for them. 
elaborate on the internships with Baker and Bloom on what they might learn make more. Okay, yes, we do have a question that says, I, I believe the question is saying that if they're interning directly at Baker and Bloom, oh, uh, yes, uh, that is what I'm guessing. And I think uh, if you intern directly at Baker and Bloom, or at Cocoon, I think it's something similar. It's going to be a community of interns. That is very important because a lot of these startups, sometimes they only have one intern. So um, that's good as well. You get to hang out with actually their existing staff. But if you have a community of interns, what we do is we, we try to gather them at least once a week. I know Cocoon actually gathers them at least twice a week, once on Monday and maybe once on Thursday uh, uh, to go over and they have a system where they, how they allocate, I think they use Trello to allocate the, the <clears throat> workout. And also on Thursday, then they kind of walk, do a debrief in a kind of a <clears throat> circular format so that then they have agency. And same with, uh, <clears throat> same with uh, Baker and Bloom. We usually have a, a lot of um, uh, interns that come in. Uh, what they do is uh, actually, let me see. Well, um, I can share with you uh, one of uh, later, uh, if some of the parents are interested, I can share. I can share some of the reports that some of our students actually have written for us. So one one thing we was like, okay, social media. We're not that good with social media. I don't know anything about TikTok, but I know of maybe some of our parents and some of our students are interested in it. So what we do is we tell the students to research on this topic. How can Baker and Blue utilize the the latest social media trends? to advertise about itself, to market about itself. And I think this is something they're also interested in. And so usually they, they spend one week with the guidance of us, uh, then they generate a report and then they present it to our whole team. And then, then uh, if they stay longer, then we actually tell them to start implementing it and see then they can gather data and then report on us, okay, what kind of worked and what didn't work. Another thing that they can also do is sometimes they create, they publish with us. We, we have had students come and publish yearbooks with us, but they did the uh, Baker and Bloom yearbook, two students working together with their photography skills. And basically um, the whole summer, they're uh, not just taking photographs, but also gathering student uh, work, uh, understanding what uh, the teachers are teaching, and then kind of making a yearbook for us. And um, some students actually also make videos for us so it really depends on their interest area and then so we try to at least first understand so that is why the CV and resume of these students are very important sometimes the parents come to us like they really didn't do much why what uh, what, C, what CV what resume well at least maybe put on the CV and resume interest and their skill sets do they know how to make videos do they know how to use Adobe uh, designer? Do they know how to uh, at least maybe use Google Suite or uh, all these things? Uh, they actually come in handy and um, uh, yes, uh, they actually come in handy and that is why I think sometimes that, uh, interning directly with, with us will help. Okay. For the four week internship, is it nine times five times? Well, to be very honest, we Baker and Bloom is all about personalization. <clears throat> and in the past, we have had many different types of requests. <clears throat> we understand a lot of our students, they actually have maybe they're in their swimming team, they're in their basketball team. So they come to us and tell us actually throughout summer, uh, like maybe Monday, uh, Wednesday, Friday morning, they actually have to do their basketball practice. Uh, is that okay? Well. Of course, if you can go do a nine to six, it's best, but we have been extremely flexible and the startups or Cocoon and Baker and Bloom have been extremely flexible as well uh, in terms of uh, uh, trying, to, uh, trying to get the students to work on something that is not within nine to six kind of parameters. So of course, if they can make some of the group meetings uh, or the training, that will be to their benefit. But if cannot, we can work around it as well. And especially in the last year when there was COVID, there, every single student had a different case. Uh, so um, I think all of them were very satisfied with how we provided very personalized uh, ways to uh, accommodate their needs. So my answer, my short answer to it is it doesn't need to be nine to six every day. And especially if you're grade seven and eight or maybe even grade nine, sometimes students cannot concentrate 
for the whole eight hours from nine to six. And we also understand that. But uh, as Rebecca, uh, no, as Erica pointed out, it's very important to have agency. So if they have agency and or if they have initiative, they don't need to be here uh, for all those eight hours. Is that whether they will check in with us, uh, make sure that they know the deadlines, and then also kind of deliver on <clears throat> uh, uh, what we ask them to. So I think those are the main things. Um, so uh, we have another question uh, asking if the training is offered to all interns or just the interns who are sent out to intern at other companies. So we all uh, the uh, the training is offered to all interns, but we must uh, we we must say that we do give a few time slots because. Uh, and if the students cannot make those time slots, we try to give some other time slots. If not, sometimes it might be one-on-one -on -one or sometimes might be a video uh, uh, intern training session. Um, those uh, internship opportunities, some of the parents, they prefer actually all four weeks at uh, the startup. They, they're telling us, oh, we actually don't have time for the um, training because they end at maybe second week of July and they need to start school in the first week of August or second week of August already. So some parents will tell us, we really don't have time for the training. Can we just jump straight in to do the internship? That is fine too. So we just kind of make sure the, the internship is longer, uh, but if they can actually do uh, the training together, that's what we recommend. And, uh, and if they can actually maybe even take out some time before July to start doing the training, I think that would be best. What is the service charge you will charge for a successfully connected? Oh, good question. I think we will, we will cover some of the uh, um, information in terms of whether you want to do internship or whether you want to do uh, projects with us, maybe in the intro meeting so that we can first understand what your needs are. <clears throat> and uh, what your concerns are, and then we can kind of think of a package for you. Did I miss it? Yeah, no, you didn't. You're good. Can, can B&B can B &B put together an info session for the kids to attend during Easter so that they are aligned and motivated and not perceiving this as a parent's initiative? <laughs> <laughs> Great idea. Yeah, no problem. Uh, we can definitely do that. If we have enough students who are interested, uh, actually we wanted to invite a couple of the students who actually joined our program uh, in the past few years to join this talk today. But unfortunately, because it is a lunch talk, a lot of them are actually at school right now, so they can't really chip in. So if you do want another info session to with students in particular, that is something we can arrange. And uh, I can also uh, perhaps invite some of the previous students who can also invite some right. of the students as well right. uh, to join these uh, info sessions and hopefully give some perspective to uh, your kids uh, and then motivate them and then encourage them to have initiative and agency. Yeah, so do we have any other questions? Erica, do you have anything else you would like to say? Well, thank you so much, everyone, for your time. I'm a parent, too. I have two young daughters, so I absolutely understand how important internships are and that everybody has lots of choices. And I hope that, you know, through this talk with Jessica, we're able to share with you some of our experience working together and that, and that you'll know that your kids will be very well taken care of. Exactly. And um, thank you so much. And we hope that if you have any questions, concerns, or you want, uh, want even more details, you can contact us. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye.